J O N. I I think it's about time that you play me some pimping, please. Play me some motherfucking pimping. Mm -hmm. Summon. I like that. Oh, you just wait. Oh, what? You you go to the same thing? Man, no, go ahead. Eat your food, man. No, nigga, you you said you hungry. I'm drinking this right now. It don't matter. I'm hungry. No, man, you eat, bro. But we got wings. We got fish. I see. I'm trying to. Man, fuck with y'all over here. This ain't the first time. Hey, man, you know how we get that can't go to this last time. He fuck with you because that nigga don't offer his food to no fucking bride. Yeah, right. Right. Right, we done had a hundred guests. That nigga ain't never offered nobody shit. No, I appreciate it. You heard it in his voice, though. He said, what it is you got over there? I said, well, he's on the wings. Anytime you see something golden fried, you better say something. Man, come on. JJ, you yeah. know me? Yeah. I fuck with that, J-O-N. Man, my food, your food, nigga, whatever you want. Yeah. I appreciate you. Whatever you need. Y'all ain't home. Yeah. Nah, we straight. Say no more. We finna have us a fish. You know what this is about. Yeah, Used to be a managed boy hunching behind the house. Yeah. Hunching yeah. behind the house. Uh -huh. This that old school shit. We used to hunch behind the house. Yeah. If a mama gone, go in, hunch on the couch. Hey. Love in her mouth. Yeah. What was that really about? Uh -huh. Then I got grown and stopped pulling it out. Ooh, don't get too nasty or don't get too graphic. Because you know I'm black and they want to see me in plastic. Uh -huh. See, that be trash and tragic. That's what I'm coming with. I'm staying flipping and getting up on that money shit. Uh -huh. I came through it. I'm whipping. I got a dummy bitch. Uh -huh. She be dummy thick. She taking dummy dick. Hey. She's a crash dummy. Uh -huh. She got that ass on her. Uh -huh. And if you walk around, I swear you ain't gonna pass on her. Okay. She be thicker than the tension in the room. Uh -huh. yeah. With a big booty and two big old boobs. Uh -huh. You might see me on the Channel 6 News. Uh -huh. Just being a nigga. Just doing what I do. Uh -huh. Like breaking in the Foot Locker, steal the display shoe. Uh -huh. Or getting to it in the lunch line. That's what a nigga do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they done caught me with some drugs on me. Hey, uh -huh. And then they say I had them guns on me. Hey, uh -huh. The judge don't want to put no bun on me. Hey, uh -huh. He needs some info from my other homie. Uh -huh. But ain't nobody gonna tell him shit. That's right. We just okay. gonna be quiet and burn down on this shit. Uh -huh. And go to court with the lawyer, beat the fucking charges. Hey. And then take the rest and buy two brand new Dodges. Oh. <laughs> like a challenge or a motherfucking Charger. Mm. Yeah, I be riding like a motherfucking Dodger. Hey. Hey. I'm talking shit like a motherfucking fly. Mm. Yo, hey. you better get off there and go home, Roger. Hey. Hey. No, nigga, that ain't the truth. This the 85 South show in the vision coming true. Uh -huh. hey. Right now, shit, we doing it behind the fence. Hey. Uh -huh. But give me a little time, I'll make it all make sense. That's okay. right. Ain't no yeah. ring, bitch. We even bought the studio. That's right. And welcome back to the 85 South Show. Yeah. 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 What you thought it was? Uh, yeah. That's just all. I go. just thought about that shit. You heard? That I shit just it, came up. Right now. I was that. Felt that in my spirit. That was all right. That's too hard, wasn't it? Yeah. Man, no come cap. on, bro. Let's no go. Cap. Come on, man. Come on. Huh? All I'm coming no for. Cap. And 2023 is what's probably already owed to me. Right. Yeah, I just, I'm coming for Round the up. Well, I know y'all coming strong in 2023. 2023. This studio's time. impressive. I, I mean, y'all ain't seen it because y'all just see this, the backdrop and shit. But man, these gentlemen, this whole team that they got here, it's some shit. <laughs> I'm having this a good time. This all like shit. You like this? I mean, man, what I, what I respect is I'm seeing growth. I'm oh, seeing okay. evolution. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing black entrepreneurship. I'm Come seeing on, black excellence. Well, that's why we brought Come you on, in man. here, man, because we named you our tour the legendary. ghetto legendary. Man, I appreciate it. And nigga, you legendary. did some of the most appreciate ghetto legendary shit. Now, everybody, I could name off. Uh, I told him over there. Crits. I told you over there. You, you the black forest gump? There, bro. <laughs> you always <laughs> seem to slow up on the right place at the right time. All glory on his feet and Amen. in the right position. Amen. Now, this, Amen. When it's all said and done, man, you going to have hit movies. No okay. cap. Hit songs. Mm -hmm. Hit TV shows. Hit TV shows. Yes, yeah. Nigga, I'm sure you done wrote a bunch of shit. Facts. Mm -hmm. Nigga, and this is the highest honor of all. This is how I wanted to introduce you to the 85 South Pop Show. Shit. Huh. Nigga, did you so cold. They let you play black Michael Jackson. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Indeed they did. Hey, the man did. sung for Simba. Yes, he did. Come on, man. Yeah. Nah, man. Yes, he sung for Simba. 
Y'all not about to have me start crying. This motherfucker don't have me start crying. Hey, 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 man. This was Thea's second oldest boy. That's right, man. You make y'all remember Thea? Thea! What? That's right, man. That's right. Mm -hmm. We were only on for nine episodes, but... <laughs> nigga, them nine episodes. Nine episodes. Nine That's nine. when Brand okay. Brandy had braces? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Brandy had braces. Yes, Brandy. she did. Come on, man. Bro, Come on, you man. real observant. No, I, I, I remember no, that. Because I, I remember when she got the Moesha, and I was like, I, I was worried about her. That was early. But still she came out nah, the whole time. Awesome. <laughs> this before all that. Okay. And for all the people in D.C. age bracket. Nobody look left. Huh. Look right. <laughs> yeah. He did all that. Spotlight. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. We got two for me. Come on. Yeah, man. Nah, man. Nah, man. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Hey, to everybody out there, too, even before we start talking. Hey, man, thank y'all, everybody. Seriously. Especially my community. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that I have kind of grown up with indirectly in some right. kind of way. You know, people that I randomly run into at the grocery store, at the airport or whatever, right. and people take time out of their day to stop and acknowledge you and your work. I know I'm not gonna get the opportunity to, to meet everybody individually out there. So I just wanted to take this opportunity on 85 South. Yeah! yeah. 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 My favorite show, Appreciate it. I'm so honored to be here. So I want to take this opportunity on 85 South to just thank everybody out there for supporting my career and especially my black community my brothers and my sisters because throughout this whole journey y'all have stood by me man and supported me even when i've probably done some films that were bullshit but but my community we'll has let you always we do no nah, my, my community has always stood yeah. up for me and been down for me so okay. thank y'all man yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. Well, shit, let's take it from the top, bro. How sure. did all of this come about? How did you start? What was your introduction to the game? Man. When did your people recognize your talent? You know what? My, my talent was recognized. I've always had a passion. You know, for people that don't know, I'm born and raised in Chicago. Uh oh, um, Shot Town. Shot Town all day. Um, you know, I've always had a passion for the arts. I come from a musical family. My My... My mother um, started off singing uh, jingles and stuff like that in the jingle mm -hmm. industry back in the, mm -hmm. in the 80s, like late 70s and 80s, the jingle business, especially for black performers. What was her number one? Her biggest jingle? Yeah. Don't, oh, don't tell her you know some of the jingles. Oh, what is going to if, if the tribute to uh, Dr. King, if, if we could light a candle, it was something that McDonald's did. I know what you're It was their about. main campaign every year. And that was actually my first recording session. I was mm -hmm. four. I was on the backgrounds on that record. And that was my first recording session at Chicago Recording Company on Ohio Street. And I was a little kid and my mother sang the lead on that. So that's what I came up under. Like, you know, my cousin Tricky, shout out to my cousin Tricky Stewart. People may know his work from like Beyonce with single ladies to the new and uh, 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 what is it? Something my soul? Yeah, oh, Break yeah. my soul. Break my soul. Sorry, Your Tricky. cousin produced that? Yeah, my cousin um, produced and uh, co-wrote that record with Dream. Uh, shout out to Dream. Dream on that motherfucker too. Dream wrote that shit and the, um, that boy called Dream and the other on one, the, the other hit that she got out. Shout out to <clears throat> shout out to Dream. I mean, all, all those guys like, right. you know, it's my family. Tricky's my blood, but Dream's an extended part of our family. But mm -hmm. yeah, I come from a musical background and so, I just grew up looking at movies, like looking at E.T. and seeing Drew Barrymore and yeah. all them like little kids acting. Right. And it just, it was fascinating to me. And I expressed to my mom, I was like, you know what, I think I wanna, I wanna do that. I wanna try that. And just, you know, based on a relationship she had been able to develop over that period of time of being in the jingle industry, mm -hmm. it was kind of natural for me to start auditioning for commercials and stuff like that. Because Chicago in the 80s was a hub for that. Like, all of the ad campaigns were created on Madison Avenue in New York, mm -hmm. but the music and the energy that would drive people to buy the products, it was, from it was and it was coming from black creators, producers, songwriters, um, still? musicians. Still. 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 Yeah. Uh, shout out to, to Burrell, um, Burrell Communications. Um, for people that don't know that history, you can look it up, you can Google it, but... Tom Burrell and Burrell Communications was the first major black advertising firm in the country, and it was based in Chicago. Is that and what Boomerang based off of? 
It might be loosely. It, 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 it might okay. be loosely based off. No, I mean, the, they, the, just the just the company, not the story. That's no, no, no just okay, the, yeah. it, it possibly could okay. be because they were the <clears throat> only black advertisement firm. So everybody in Chicago that was a singer, actor, or whatever, we all got our start through Burrell Communications mm -hmm. doing commercials and jingles. Mm -hmm. That's how it happened. Damn. Mm. Shout out to Burrell. Shout man. out to Burrell. Yeah, no, and, I, and, I, and I definitely got to make sure I get them props because they don't, they don't get enough props. It's firms like that to where performers like myself and others, we stood on their shoulders, man, to where we could get our opportunity, where we could springboard and have careers. Right. And they don't get the credit that they rightfully deserve because they were just doing their job. But right. now I'm in a position where I can give them their flowers. Like, I do want to tell them thank you, like, publicly. I hope y'all see this so y'all know that people from this city that took advantage of the opportunities that y'all provided, especially young black kids, right. like, we, we still here. So, man, thank you. Yeah. you know Real shit. And so, and then from there, I started auditioning for, you know, for films right. and stuff like that. But that, what was, that your was first the film. The Long Walk Home with Whoopi Goldberg, Sissy Ooh. Spacey. That's how you jump out the gate oh, in your yeah. first film with a with motherfucker. That's one. That's like Tony. That's like, that's like 91. A uh, ego. Yeah, that was no. That was 89. Yeah, okay. Going. Damn. That was 89. Cause okay. that's when Do the Right Thing had come out, and we had all gone to the theater and see that. That shit was hard. And uh, yeah, we shot that in Montgomery, Alabama. It was a period piece. It talked about the um, two families during the uh, the start of the civil rights movement and the mm -hmm. Montgomery bus boycott. Mm -hmm. And it was a phenomenal film to be a part of because I got to work with Whoopi, got to work with Sissy Spacek, and I got to do a period piece that meant something, you know, to our our story, our particular struggle. And so I got a chance to like even meet people. You know how you have background actors right. and extras on set and stuff. So usually a lot of those people that's on set that's in these movies, they don't have a connection to the story that we tell it. Right. With this film, it was actually women that were there, women and men that were there who were older, but they marched. They were doing the sit-ins. They were, you know, part of the Freedom Riders. So it was like I was getting the experience of being on set and training as an actor, but I was learning more about who I was, like embracing my identity more as a, as a young black boy mm -hmm. that eventually is gonna come into the world as a black man. So it was like this. My first experience in film was just the shit, man. Yeah, it man. was incredible. Yeah. Man, incredible. That's a hell of God's a way to come God's been good. Hey, man. All right, yeah. got to get yeah. yeah. God's been good. What, you, what would you say you start seeing the early success in first, the music or the acting? The acting. And it was after... Um, How, that's what I was saying. We, me and DC, we always talk about this. How mm -hmm. did you parlay? Since you say you got, got the acting that. first, how did you parlay and like bring the music around to your acting? I did it. It Like, all those opportunities as it relates to me doing music were like organic opportunities and blessings that were just brought into my life through God because there was a time and see it's different for you now and I, and I love that because it's guys like yourself who are ambidextrous in that, in that regard right. who are who have a multi-skill set like it's myself but, it's still but, hard it, but man it was so much harder right because you had people on the music end who were trying to discredit you and saying uh, well, you're not really a singer because you're not devoting all of your time right, right, to this, right? Right, right? But then you had people in the film world who weren't really respecting what you were doing in music because they were going, well, you can make so much more money over here. Right. Why do you give a fuck about that? Like, right. you just want to be a star and be on stage. And so I was always in this weird position of trying to balance myself within that and like constantly trying to prove myself. Right. And even as like a young performer, you know, you already going through adolescence and like your body switching up, your voice is changing. Well, mine didn't, but you know, most of the, <laughs> in most cases, your voice changed. So you deal with all these, you know, different insecurities, you know, coupled with the pressure of trying to maintain a career in both of these different genres of entertainment. Right. But again, I give God the credit for that and my mother because no matter what, it was like, she always supported me. So any time that I would doubt myself or I get to that point where I get discouraged or disheartened, she remind me of who I was, like, in our legacy and the family that we come from. And also reminded me, too, that, you know, me being in the business, that doesn't define who I am. Right. That's just a part of who I am. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was able to, in my mind, put it all together and find a way to still be able to be constructive and, like, and be productive and do my thing without losing myself in the process. So
what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. February the 18th, I will be in Savannah, GA. Yes, yes, you heard that right. At the end of the day tour, it's coming to Savannah, February 18th. What's the name of the spot? At the Johnny Mercer Theater. Boy, I've been having a ball in Oakland. I love this goddamn city. Y'all got the funniest homeless people I ever seen. I gave a nigga three dollars. He acted like those were the three he needed to not be homeless no more. Soon as I gave him the money, you didn't put me back in the motherfucking game. <laughs> nigga tried to whistle at me, didn't even whistle, just made the noise. Nephew, where are you? Come here. Where are you? Let me holler at you right quick. Johnny Mercer Theater, February 18th. At the end of the day, Carlos Miller, 8 o'clock, is going down in Savannah. Hit the link, get those tickets, man. You already know, February 18th at the Johnny Mercer Theater, I will be in Savannah. Because at the end of the day, you need to come see me. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And one thing about us, baby, we gonna be outside. And we gonna do some karaoke. Y'all have been asking us for the longest to have a karaoke night, and we finally got that shit together. Yes. And on top of that, not only is it just me and Lex, we got music soul child, too. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to have your moment and really sing in front of everybody and blow, you, I don't care if you singing, juggling, rapping, whatever you do, we want y'all to send y'all tapes in. Now yes. there's only a few slots available. Mm -hmm. You have to be in Atlanta. This event is at City Winery in Atlanta on March 1st. So you have to be in Atlanta to participate. So if you're in Atlanta, send your tape in. We wanna hear you sing, rap, juggle. Blow fire. Whatever you do. Whatever you do, we want to see that shit. Right. Send the tapes in. And mind you, this is a competition, so me, music, Andrea will be judging you. And on top of that, if you win, you getting the grand prize. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all come and see us. And even if you just want to come turn up, come on, City Winery. Come watch the show. Yeah, come watch the show. Link below. See y'all soon. Period. What was that first track like when you when they finally when you finally displayed it and they started taking you serious as both? It was it was the Chingy record. No, yeah, it was a Chingy record. I wanted man. to say the Chingy, but I feel like it was something before that. Nah, it was the Chingy record because okay, let me keep it real. In Chicago, my city know what the fuck I'm That's about. It was a record <laughs> that they played and they knew it was you yeah, and it got. It was it, Love Ambition. Right. It was Love right. Ambition, produced by Keith Crouch and written by Rasan Patterson right. and Uncle Kipper. Shout out to those guys, Kipper Jones. And that record was released during my um, tenure with Motown, but it didn't reach na national acclaim no, or ten success. Years? 10 years? No, 10 years. No, no. Oh, 10 years, oh, yeah, okay, ten my year, bad, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, but, <laughs> like, nigga, you was on Motown for 10 years? No, 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 I wasn't on it that long. Okay. Um, but what ended up happening was, is that the record didn't really take off on a national level, but Chicago, because it was a Steppers record. Right, right. And it had that groove to it. And in the city, like, we support our own. We may look crazy sometimes on the news, like, but when it all boils down to it, Chicago, we support our own. So when that record came out, it was like, Radio kind of got behind it, but it was the people that got behind it. And so when you hear Chicagoans talk about love ambition, that's a very personal record for us mm -hmm. because that Especially was- Especially with the stepper crowd, I know yeah, that. Yeah, man. And that, yeah. Was, that was like my coming out party as an artist. And at that time, Chicago was the only city with the exception of like New Orleans, maybe a couple others mm -hmm. that really embraced me, man, and made me feel confident in my journey moving forward. That'd be hard. We ought to throw a stepper's ball. Y'all should. That will be hard. That be hard. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of Chicago like, trash step, plant down here. Somebody like a stepper ball. Like, you know how to step? You just like, gonna host have, it? We can have, have the about? people who want to come. Like, we can come and do, like, some sessions with, right. like, a stepper coach. Yeah. Yeah. Step? Oh, you gonna get I'm them saying, together. Break, but you can only come you gonna get you them together. Own, you hey, gotta bring see, your own Don't say y'all gonna do that shit. Oh, yeah. Y'all ain't gonna do it. Of course. Y'all got Chicago looking at this right now. And then we'll talk about your ass. What talking about? The dance is stepping where you got a partner. Yeah, we talking about stepping. I thought you talking about, like, hey, bro. Oh, hell no. <laughs> that just goes to show how old oh, my ass is. Nah, I'm talking about... Nah, I'm talking about... Nah, I'm talking about... 
Like step in the name of love. Yeah, like, step in the name of love. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Tuesday. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a that's a big thing. <laughs> if you gotta be dressed right. alike and you gotta have your own partner. Like we're not letting no singles in. And you, you gotta, gotta have be. a routine. Yeah, you got, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's real classy. And, a you know, real it's routine. Something, it's yeah. something that you do with your lady. You, you have a nice and even and out. Right. Y'all had a little matching suits on, you go yeah. dance and step, you got your fly gators on. That's real Chicago shit. Shout out to the crib. Rest in peace, my niggas go bubble, man. Like I wanted you to uh, talk about Chicago a little sure. bit because, like you said, it's so much negative press out there. Bro. That, talk yeah, about that your was, experience yeah, right. as a Chicagoan. Some of the, this you know, like nigga, put on for the city, man, basically, right now. Let, let, let motherfuckers know from somebody who really from there. Let me tell y'all something, man. Uh, Chicago, in my opinion, is the most beautiful city on the planet, and it's not just the the city landscape and all of that. It, it's really the people. Um, and especially the black community that exists there, you know, the, the, the families on the south side and the west side, that's what gives Chicago its identity. Chicago is a working class blue collar town filled with people that keep their head down, don't complain, they go to work every day, they support their families and they try their best, you know what I'm saying, to get to different points in their life where they view as being successful. But they're unsung heroes but they not haters. If they see somebody else coming up and doing their thing, and especially if you're from the city, man, you'll get the support, you'll get the love. You know what I'm saying? And it won't be a thing where, you know, you have like a bad trip. I mean, look at the shit that's going on with Rob. Like, they won't let him go. Like, regardless of whatever, right. it's gonna be some folks still in Chicago that's gonna play step in the name of love, regardless of whatever, however you feel about them. Right. And that's, every, that's your individual prerogative, but there are some people that are gonna continue to support his music okay. and what he does because he's from the town. That being said, there is a lot of violence that happens. There is that gang culture, that gang element. But I think we are getting to a place as a people. Well, I know collectively as black people all over this country and this world, we're getting to a place where we're understanding that that's just, that's so counterproductive and it's so putting us further behind the eight ball. It just doesn't make sense. But you're beginning to see now a lot of the young cats taking more of an initiative to speak out, right. to be more active in their communities, like G Herbo, right. you know what I'm saying? Like you see him in the neighborhood doing certain things. Shout out to Inglewood Barbie, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? These are all um, people from this city, activists. My man, Justin Morgan, um, people that are, are coming to the forefront now who wanna be leaders. I sit on the board of directors for an organization called Hello Baby, which is geared towards keeping the black family nucleus intact. It's the, the, the headquarters is literally right on East 61st in St. Lawrence in the middle of the shit, like where uh, FBG, uh, BG Duck and all them is from, like where it go down. But there's a, um, there's a community center there that where we're promoting unity within the community, especially amongst the youth and with single mothers and single black fathers. So those of us who grew up in the city that know what it is, and know how beautiful it is, we're trying our best to, to present a different narrative. And I, it's gonna take some time right. because mainstream media still wants to present a certain kind of story. But as long as you got guys like myself, and especially people like Lena Waithe, who are really pushing the line. Fuck you, about? you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. We're like telling a real story. Like what y'all see on the shot, that's in Chicago, I know. I, I grew up going to cookouts, going to my grandmother's house, hanging out with my friends, mm -hmm. going to Lim's barbecue, going to Harold's chicken, shit like that, going to Markham Skate and Rink. Like, that's the Chicago I know. Yeah, I knew some GDs, I knew some BDs, I knew some Latin Kings and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to be a part of that, so I didn't get wrapped up in it. If you, you want to be a part of that, you can find what you're looking for. But if you cats like myself and many others that live there and that are part of that community who are looking for something better and looking to spread a different kind of message, man, we exist, man. Chicago is the shit, man. Y'all come see us, man. Don't come during the winter. You won't have a good time. Hell right. no. Right. <laughs> right. Come during summertime, shy, man. We'll show y'all a good time, I had man. to learn that. I had to learn that the hard way. I went up there doing shows in the winter. And I was like, oh, you, that's oh, how no, they that do shit, us in the I didn't know. I was just happy you know, to get shows. Oh, no, I was, in the South get booked uh -uh. in the North when it get cold. Oh, in the winter. Yeah, they yeah, yeah now I know. Now, now I know you say no, and then they come back and they hit you with the summer date, and that shit is amazing oh, when you amazing. go up there, man. It's yeah. Beautiful. yeah. It's beautiful. And so y'all tour, too. Like, y'all really be out. 
right. you know, with the people. So you can see how these different cities, like they flow and, you know, the chemistry and how they react to you. But, but Chicago is like one of them places. And I thought I saw like, uh, you posted something about Detroit like that. Mm-hmm. You was like, man, if they fuck with you. They coming out. They, they coming out, they fuck with you. Right. Chicago the same. Bro, that's way. why I be tough. We were on the road. That shit be amazing. It really be, it literally feel like we from 20 different cities. We're like the country, Like really. people like, ask us country. like. What's your favorite city? Like, man, I can't even describe it because it's like right. they, oh, yeah. they in competition with each other. Like, they gonna out love a motherfucker. And they right. just love y'all, man. That like, should be crazy. It's, it's so beautiful. Like, and, and I know y'all probably hear that all the time, but <coughs> man, it's really dope what y'all doing, man. We appreciate it, family. Because you're giving people a platform, you know, where they can tell their stories and backstories. Like, I saw the episode with Snoop. Right. Man, that was a great was episode. Crazy. And see, people don't get a chance to hear them Snoop stories like that, to hear the I real I can't believe history. how much stuff of that I hadn't heard. I'm sitting here, I watched it back, and I was still I like... I had to watch it back. Man, I can't dope. believe Snoop ain't yeah. never met Michael Jordan. Yeah. Now, Michael I Jordan gonna hear that shit and be like, man, somebody call this nigga. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> Tupac was on that road for eight months. That's right. it? Yeah. Yeah. In my head, as a right, growing that up, shit my TV like said, years, I said, bro, he was with them folks like five years. Yeah. He said, bro, I ain't known a nigga for like eight months. But it was so, they were so active, because I was out in California during that time, during the East Coast, West Coast shit. And, but it felt like it was going on forever. Yeah, I'm it, sure it, it did. Man, man, that shit, man, that shit was, Sheesh. that was something. Like, and especially a cat that wasn't from either one of those places, and you yeah. kind of in the middle box, <laughs> like, go. Like, God damn, this shit is serious. You had to learn all that shit. Oh, yeah, and I stayed out there. I didn't know that's what they meant. No, nigga, I, real, this is a true story. So we out, we out for the Soul Train Awards. I'm on Motown. Right. Um, this is when Andre Harrell was there. So he was putting forth, like, this whole new media blitz to kind of promote him coming over to Motown. So he had billboards and shit everywhere. Mm-hmm. And um, when the Soul Train Awards came to L.A., he threw a big like Motown coming out party. Like, you know, this is, this is my thing. I'm taking over to him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will never forget it. It was in Sunset Plaza, that little strip on Sunset Boulevard. And it was a, a restaurant there where he had this party. And it was kind of like open. So we in there and mind you, I'm like 16 at the time. I shouldn't even been in that shit, but I was. Right. <laughs> and um, I'm in there dancing with this chick or whatever. And, yeah. Stepping, doing my little thing. <laughs> I think I was moonwalking. I was still playing. You was in there, yeah. You was I was still playing my Michael Jackson shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm, I'm dancing and shit. And all of a sudden, it was just, just this huge commotion. You just saw people kind of like fleeing right. and going to all these different parts of the clubs. So I'm looking around. I'm like, and I just see like a red Bentley pull up, and I think it was like a black Bentley. And like Suge and Pac jumped out of separate Bentleys. And they, I mean, they skirted past security in a whole nine. Security didn't even, they didn't even ask them what they were doing there searching or nothing. They breezed past the security and they went around the party looking for like members of Bad Boy and like, and looking for Andre and shit like that because that was during that whole, that was at the beginning of the <laughs> shit. The club looking for they, and they left you in there. Man, my right hand of God. No, I saw this. I was in there oh, with okay. my cousin Kevin. Okay, my okay. cousin Kevin Harrell. <laughs> he was my guardian. He was traveling with me at the time. So we we both in the spot hanging out and doing our thing. Cause it was right. a festive, it was the Soul Train Award. Right. Yeah. What's going on? It's, it's supposed to be shit. fun. Man, yeah. them niggas came through there. Like <laughs> It's supposed to be bro, fun, man. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun, but man, they they came through on like they were pushing the line. What happened? Man. No. <laughs> I seen I seen Andre and Andre, I love you. God rest your soul, man. I saw Andre. Cause we were laughing about something maybe five minutes prior to that. Right. But man, when them niggas came through, I didn't see Andre after that. Took him back to New York. <laughs> and on. I was like, man, Dre, where'd you go? He was like, man, I ain't fucking around with you. He's like, man, I was out. But it was it was one of those situations where I saw all of that like up close and personal, like seeing Pac and Suge real aggressive out in the LA streets with all the death row, like all the Compton outside, really? pushing the line. It was something to see. But then it was also cool to see Bad Boy and what they were doing. They had such a, you know, an interesting energy. Like, you know, shout out to Slim Pickens, all the all the cats in the um, Super Mario, all the cats in the street team right. where they would have the picket signs and they'd be going up and down, you know, streets in New York like a real movement. Mm-hmm. Like how y'all got y'all's jackets. Right. It was reminiscent when I saw that, and that's why I was smiling to myself inside because I've seen that before. Right. I saw that with Bad Boy. 
and that energy and that presence that y'all have just being young, black and brilliant and creative and pushing the line. Right. Like it's, it was that, that energy I saw too early on. So I've been able to see quite a bit, man. You grew up in the industry, but black like man Clayton was talking about earlier, bro. You gotta tell us about your experience working on Thea, bro. Oh, man, the episodes, but this shit gonna live. Like you said, that's some, one of them ones that the black community ain't gonna never forget about. Yeah, man, Thea was a, um, <clears throat> I gotta say, that was a great show personally for me to be a part of. Um, I won't get too heavy into it. There was right. a lot of, there was a lot of behind the scenes drama that went on. Um, not to rehash between like Thea and Brandy. Um, there was like a, a somewhat of a negative undertone as far as that's concerned. But the experience of, for me personally, working at Universal Studios, working on the back lot, you know, being on the same lot with fucking Martin, where me and Brandy would walk down to the Martin set like on our lunch break and watch them rehearse. Um, to being able to like freely, you know, walk up to Universal Studios and get on the amusement rides. And Hold on, man, y'all watch Martin rehearsals? Right. Real talk, man. We and go to and go right <laughs> and go go and go ride. Me like, and Brandy, and y'all can ask her this. Like, when, when the she, fuck when she we come gonna on? ask Brandy? <laughs> She'll come on. I hope so. <laughs> Brandy will come on. Come man, on, Brandy, Brandy will, come on. I would Brandy. love to see Brandy. Hey, what's up, world? Friday, February seventeenth. We back at eight o'clock. North. Charleston Performing Arts Center in North Charleston, South Carolina. That's where I'm gonna be at. Cause big city women take that bra off every day at the same time. <laughs> 527, 545, it don't matter what he had in the world, that bitch coming off. Sit in traffic, ah, oh, shit! <laughs> Pull that bitch out the sleeve. <laughs> then the first thing they gonna do is scratch under that titty. <laughs> Oh, shit. You know why they do that? Because big titties itch on the bottom. Little titties itch on the top. So uh, everybody in Chuck Town, go ahead and grab those tickets and come pull up on me at 8 o'clock, man. If y'all still pulling up around 8 o'clock, we'll wait a little bit. But, you know, it's black people time, so don't even worry about it. I know how y'all get down in South Carolina. Hey, what's up, it's man Carlos Miller. It's a new year, so hopefully you're not giving out the old you. That's right, this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you will receive your prescription within days. So if you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code 85 south at checkout and just pay $5 for shipping. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepare and ship direct to your door in a discreet package. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information, and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85 South to receive your first month free. BlueChew.com. Go get you some. Hi, it's your boy Chico Bean, and I want to know if you're ready for the biggest Sunday in sports. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 57, has all the Super Bowl action you need. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get in on the Super Bowl 57 excitement with DraftKings Happy Hour Super Boost. Check the DraftKings Sportsbook app every day between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And you need to check these to see what prop bet will be boosted. DraftKings Sportsbook is one of our sponsors. And being as though everybody is up on the parlays and all of that stuff in sports, they have asked me to give a prediction on who I think will win the Super Bowl coming up in Phoenix, Arizona. And I have to say, I'm going with the Eagles. Gotta pick the Eagles because the Eagles are the Eagles. And that's just what it is. I mean, you know, the Chiefs are cool, but you know, I'm gonna go with the Eagles because it's, I think it's it's time for my man Jalen Hurts to take it to the next level. They slept on Jalen Hurts, and because of that, he will shine in Super Bowl 57. So I'm going with the 
Eagles Sportsbook, DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm betting $5 and I want my $200 to bet on what I really want to bet on. Water polo. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code 85SOUTH. New customers can bet $5 on Super Bowl 57 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook with code 85SOUTH. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. I'll call it. It's oh, sure. love, Brandon. Come on, man. But what happened was we would, we would have our lunch breaks and the Martin set, like you would come out of stage five, I think that was our stage, and you could make a right and walk maybe like what would be equivalent of like a half a block, and it was Martin's stage. And then we would just walk in because we were the only other black show on the lot, so we all knew we was there together. Right. Right. And they never hated on us. Like they would let us, you know, Martin, Tisha, um, Tommy, God rest his soul, Carl, they would see us walking because we all kids. Right. And they'd be like, man, y'all go up in the stands and, man, y'all chill out. Yeah. And so we would see the Martin show like two weeks before that shit would come out. <laughs> so I would be calling niggas back home like, man, wait till y'all see the shit that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, how do you know that? I'd be like, nigga, because I know. Right, right, right. right, right, right. But watch this shit when Martin would say this. And you know, I'd tell you that. Right, 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 right. So I was seeing, you know, all of that stuff growing up. And me and, me and Brandy would, you know, walk back to set. And I can't, I can't speak for her, but for myself, I would apply the things that I would learn watching them. Mm -hmm. Subtle nuances, little things. Um, it wasn't like jokes, it was a facial expression, it was a mannerism. It was the letting the joke live, whoever the, you know, learning that chemistry of letting your co-star have his or her moment, learning that space that w in comedy, which we all right. know there's a, there's a, Timing. And yeah. timing. It's yeah. a dance. Right. And yeah. especially when you work on and it's a beat. Right. So I was learning all of that. And that was my college, man, was sitting there and watching, you know, them do their thing. And they were so gracious. I met Eddie Murphy there too when we did the he was doing Beverly Hills Cop Three on on Universal. Shit. Cold. And That's me cold. and Brandy walked over there during our lunch break. <laughs> Y'all got a bitch. And they go down. Hey, I know the PA was like, do we have eyes on Brandy? <laughs> no, they, do, do we have eyes on Jason? Jason? They, would know, eyes on Jason? <laughs> they would know where we would be going because oh, okay. anything that was black that would right. pop up at Universal. Oh, they knew. They knew. They knew. Like, and they especially, knew. you saw Eddie Murphy and Martin. Right. And, come right. on, man. That's right. Mount Olympus, a black right. starter. Right. Yes. Right. So, no, nah, we going over there right. studying, you know, a We know where they are. And Eddie was so nice. He signed. Man, I asked that nigga to sign six things. I'm sign. <laughs> man, sign this for my best friend. What about for, uh, me and my teacher want it. But he, he signed it. He asked all our questions. And, mm. you know, for me, that, that was a lasting impression, man. That taught me how to be gracious. Thanks. Like, with interacting with your fans and interacting with people who are admirers of your work. Like, those guys taught me how to be a star. Right. Because they were like, they superstars. Right. And they still were taking the time to, like, so, man, you know, what you want to do? Well, how y'all like filming over there? Oh, yeah, okay. And, well, you know, asking a little stupid shit, right. but, yeah, man, right. they were cool. Hey, your little brother, your little smart, brother on Theo, though. Huh? Your little brother. Yeah. He had oh, the, you talking about his fade? He had the worst haircut yeah. <laughs> in black TV history. That, that might have been. That was one of the top <laughs> three <laughs> worst. Really? Might have been. They still talk about your haircut, man. <laughs> you ain't never gonna he be able to no live that. He had no choice in that. <laughs> he did not choose that I as a child. Like his biological <laughs> father had a lot to do with no, that. No, he didn't. He and said that something. That was the issue. He was mad. Wait, he, he had like to that. be. His <laughs> mom. I'm sorry, Brittany, but I gotta tell the truth because they they do it. You dirty out here. <laughs> no, Brittany yeah. didn't want his hair cut like that. His mom was cutting his hair like that. Oh. You could not let your mama cut your That's hair. True. Right? And Brent and Brent is dad. He was a real one. He was a nice guy, but you know, he's like one of those quiet guys, like a quiet husband. You should have so let me cut so it. You, you, you would just see him looking at his boy. And you should see him laughing inside to himself like <laughs> I all can't right, do it. I can't shit, all right? That's, That's hilarious. How, all right. Now how the hell you get on smart guy? Cause first of all, mm -hmm. Taj is goddamn light skinned. Yeah. The other nigga is light skinned. Yeah. The daddy is light skinned. Mm -hmm. And you were dark skinned. He wasn't. But I was like, how in the that, hell? That now, happens. I'll tell you. That man, happens. You know, as a kid, family. I'm sitting there like, oh, yeah. Fuck? Now, I'm going to keep it real with you, DC. Man, that audition was flawless, bro. That's because one of the ones where you just knew you knew. Real shit. Real no, that audition. That audition. You killed that audition. You killed the audition. Everybody wanted a big brother like you. Everybody. Yeah. I appreciate it. No, and I think that was the thing. I feel like that shit you learned from Martin. 
Boy, you, 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 hey, bro, hey, we, we, we was tuned in, bro. Absolutely. I ain't gonna hold you. That's why I shout, out. shout out to Omar Gooden, too. Like, we, man, we would, after work, we would study other sitcoms and other performers. It's your mm-hmm. So, you know, we would study Jamie. Um, and this is, this is the work we were doing after work, because we would go home, right. we order pizza, smoke a little something, right. chill out, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? And then we'd be like, man, let's look at what so-and-so and them doing. So we turn on their show, we study, be like, we gonna do that shit better next week. Right. We gonna flip it like this. And we, so me and Omar was like doing that all the time. You know, just playing with the craft. Right. Yeah. Like just trying to figure yeah. out how to be better. You know what I'm saying? Like how you got young niggas that work on their jump shot, right. yeah, yeah, work on yeah. their layup, work yeah. on their left hand. Like that's what me and Omar would do every day after work. We would just sit down and we look at shows and we look at different performers and we would just find those different things that maybe weren't in your face, right? but they were subtle things that we knew that we could play on and make them our own. Right. Probably then, like the best big brother I ever seen growing up. Good looking. It was like, good okay, looking. you got your little brother finna come to school with you. Yeah. Like, he 10, but it can't fuck up my cool. Yeah. But how can I embrace my 10-year-old little brother? Fuck it. Not only that, is he catching up to me? Or is right. it, it was like, it was a lot of shit as a child that y'all taught us as kids. Like, and then it was black fatherhood. Yeah. Black parenting. Man, we didn't know DC, man, the, the kind of example that we were setting, man. Just keeping it all the way 100, like, we were just having fun. And I think for me and Omar in particular, we wanted to show young black kids who we really were versus, like, how sitcom TV would try to portray us a lot of the times, like, hokey and corny or, you know, nah, having just some weird yeah. shit that they were saying in the lines. We'd be like, how the fuck they get away with saying that? Right. So it was like, we were the kids where if they gave us a line and we knew that shit wasn't gonna fly in the community, we'd be like, I'm not saying it. Right. Like, right. I'm, I'm not saying that, bro. Like, okay, you wanna get that kind of joke across? Why don't we say it like this? Yeah. And I'll give them credit. Shout out to J- uh, Danny Kalis, the creator of the show. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> listened to it. Yeah. Like, even when it came down the wardrobe, I was like, man, ain't no young black kid walking around wearing them shits on their right. feet. Yeah. I was like, yo. <laughs> I was like, yo, I need some J's, man. That's I was some like, pro kids. I, 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 I would be calling up they, to Nike Because they didn't want you to have the little logo and all that they shit. They wouldn't want us to have logos on anything. Yeah. Because they didn't want to pay for it. Right. right. So they'd be like, nah, But they don't we make you pay for that. that. Yeah, and I'd be like, don't do I'd be that. like, yo, man, who cares? Like, right. we got to be cool. Right. So like. I need, I need the Iversons. Right. Yeah. I need them before yeah. everybody else has them on the street. Yeah. I hey, guarantee let's do an episode. How about this? Let's do an episode. <laughs> he needs the Iversons. <laughs> then no, they but become you know, one. Put them in yeah. British Knights. Nice. But it was, yeah. it was ideas like that yeah. that we could toss around. But yeah. And, and being that Iverson was such like a controversial figure in sports at that time, mm-hmm. they were like, okay, you can wear the shoes. We just don't want to do a lot of bigging up on that. You know, we don't want to go too hip hop because we were introducing vernacular and slang. Mm-hmm. We were bringing all of that to the show, but it was still a Disney show. Yeah. Right. So we just had to find the balance. But thankfully, man, like, you know, we had producers. Shout out to Suzanne DePass, who was my former manager. <laughs> Suzanne DePass. Let me, let me give her credit right now, because she's another one that doesn't get enough credit. Some of y'all's favorite shows from the Jacksons miniseries, the, the Jacksons and American Dream. Bro, you got to tell me about that. Sister, sister. Come, sister. On. Yeah. Come on. Smart guy. Come on. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are a few, a few more after that. But Suzanne DePash, y'all, is a brilliant black woman who's been in this industry since the Motown days, since mm. the 60s. Mm-hmm. She was the one that discovered Michael Jackson and Jackson 5. Mm. We have those shows right now that everybody can go back and look at because of her. She was the one that kicked open the door for T and Tamara and Taj and the whole Maury family. She was the one that kicked open the door for me. Hey, Suzanne, thank you. I'm just telling the people because they need to know your name. There was a black woman that blazed that trail. There was a Beautiful. black woman that blazed that trail. What the line key? How the hell? That was after the Jackson miniseries. Go to the Jackson first. Go to Jackson and okay. leave it right in the goddamn. Oh, All right, right. Okay, cool. <laughs> right. That's, a, that's a fucking honor. The play black Michael Jackson. It was what? an honor, but again, that, that was, was a, that was another situation when we talk about the example of music, where God presented that opportunity. Amen. Amen. Because, and this is just to just bring up the, the thing about Lion King, and I'll go back to the Jacksons. How I got that was. I was shooting the scene, um, the live scene of Who's Loving You. And that particular day, we had already pre-recorded it. 
and all I had to do was just sing with the track. But for some odd reason that day, sound was down, and I had to sing that shit live, mm. like all day long. <laughs> so man, it was like maybe after like the fourth setup shot, I'm kind of exhausted vocally, but I'm like really warmed up, so I'm belting this shit out. Right. And we on stage and the lights are shining our way, so we don't see who's out in the audience. We just kind of see the cameras on the dolly, but we don't see like who's out there, out right, there. Right. So we get through with the with the day, we get through with that scene, we moving on. Me and my mom is walking back to the trailer and she was like, yo, you know who just came up to me and asked me about you? I was like, who, ma? She's like, Elton John. Elton John was just here. He's saying he's doing some kind of movie with Disney. He is saying that you'd be perfect for it. I'm like, Elton John, the Benny and the Jets. I'm like, that guy, and I'm, sorry, Sir Elton, but I really <laughs> wasn't into Elton John like that back then. I was a kid, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, so, right. I mean, I appreciate his work. Now, I love Elton John, and especially what he did for me, but, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but as a kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, she was amazing. That's as a child, I didn't know. Right. That's <laughs> kind of cool. But, but the she shit walked he did back, for me. she said, he wants you to audition for this singing role in this new animated thing that they're doing for Disney called The Lion King. Ooh, she just sounds And crazy. I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Well, let's do it. Right. So we, I think two days later, we wrapped the Jacksons, and then Disney had took over everything from that point on, like our hotel and everything. Right. And so I'll never forget, man, like the day after we wrapped, I went down to um, Burbank at the Disney Recording Studios, that was another song I sang down maybe like three or four times. They had cameras set, that's what I vividly remember. They had cameras set up like this in the vocal booth. And they were just telling me, they was like, be as animated as you can. Like, like if you're just singing it to the world. So any movements you wanna do, like even if you're not on the mic, just move around. Cause we're gonna put all of that in a character. So I'm like, huh? Like, that don't even make any sense, but I did right. it anyway. Right. So there's actually footage that I saw online where they showed me performing the song in the studio that day, and that was one of the cameras. And so a lot of that stuff that you see with Simba in the animation with and stuff that I was that doing. doing. Hey man, Saturday, February 18th at eight o'clock, we will be at the Johnny Mercer Theater in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, big Johnny Mercer Theater. I feel like you gotta say that. Later with the eye patch, go over there and see if them niggas gangsta. <laughs> I believe you the toughest bitch in here. I just, I just feel like you can have any bitch selling pussy in two weeks. <laughs> What's your name? Pearly? Aloysius? Yeah, that bitch done sold some pussy before. She the type of person, fuck people, bitches, dudes, whoever. Just Aloysius. Woo! She got a strap on with some real foreskin on it. Grab those tickets, pull up on me. You already know how we do, man. Savannah, what y'all waiting on? Grab the tickets. We're trying to sell out right now. So by the time you see this, the tickets need to be halfway gone. Get yours. Go get them. I'm waiting on you. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex T. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing blogs. Mm -hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all. So if one episode a week is not enough, y'all about to get some more content on Patreon. Yes, y'all be saying, oh, make the episodes longer. I need twice a week well this is your opportunity to see us twice a week and also you kind of get you're gonna get a look into our lives mm -hmm. and know us on a personal level mm -hmm. so make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash poor mind sign up today there's different tiers so if you want audio only you can just listen if you want video and audio we have that too and also we have a top top tier where you get exclusive access to merch shows all that good mm -hmm. stuff so go to patreon.com backslash poor minds and sign up today Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy DC on Fly. In case you haven't heard, we at the 85 South Show have launched our own independent streaming service called Channel 85. And for our loyal supporters, we are currently offering 20% off for six months. Just use code 85 percenter. Right, spread it out. Code 85 P E R 
S-E-E-N-T-E-R. Once you sign up, you'll get access to the podcast a whole day earlier than everyone else on YouTube. All of our new live shows, independent specials, new shows like Five on the 80 Vibe, and even get your special offers and discounts for 85 South merchandise. And the shows, it's only $8.50 a month or $85 for the whole year. And you can find us online at China85.com. Or, or on your iPhone, Apple TV, Amazon, Fire Stick, Roku, and even on Android. And remember, use code 85 percenter for 20% off for a whole six months. That's channel 85. Subscribe. You ain't jump on no giraffe. I ain't jump on no, no giraffe. <laughs> I ain't jump on no giraffe. You stupid. You stupid. I ain't jump on no giraffe. <laughs> but it's a lot of yeah. right. Right. But, uh, right. but that shit right. hard though. That's crazy. Cause that what? Man, bro. Cause that, that was before hard. the motion capture shit. Yeah. Really, right. this is real animation. Right. So they had like to like. You know, so they really shit. make their mask. Asking, asking you to say, okay, what would the character <laughs> look like? Right. Okay, the right. you said everybody look like. Did you catch yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. And you did that. Shit. And the animators, the, the artists, look. it was three, three or four of them. <laughs> And they were in the control room drawing that shit. And I'm and when I got there, they would have punched in like, yeah, Jay, we're gonna steal your whole sauce on this one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was cool because right. when I saw what was going on, and then I got really excited, and this is a true story. Right. After I sang the song, the producers were looking at each other and they were like whispering to each other, like, man. So I'm looking, they like, hey, so. Would you be able to stay in Los Angeles for a little bit longer? Hell yeah. I was like, yeah, sure. Because I really didn't want to go home. I'm mm-hmm. just going to go back to school. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like yeah, sure, you know, I'll, I'll stick around. They were like, well, the reason why we want you to stick around because we think we may want you to do the voice of this character. Like, mm. you're perfect for Simba. So I'm like, oh, shit. Like, that sounds kind of big. Like, OK. Man, like 15 minutes later, um, Business Affairs from Disney had called back and they had just closed their deal with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Mm-hmm. So the yeah. deal had been finalized and closed, but if, if, if they would have waited, if his agent would have waited another two hours to close that deal, I would have had that role. Ooh. But, Hold on, so wait a minute, so it wasn't your voice. No, no he, you just sing it. I was the singing voice. He was the singing voice. I was just the, the actual, actual voice. The okay. actual The actor the was actual uh, voice. Tool Time. Uh, yeah, he was on, uh, uh, yeah, yep. Okay. Who, I, I've met Jonathan and, and hung out with him on a couple different occasions because Home Improvement, their soundstage on Disney was next to Smart Guy. Mm. Mm. So like, the voice of Simba was right there and then the singing voice of Simba Ooh. was on the next soundstage. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. crazy, that's, man. That's what happened. And then when that came out, you know, people didn't know that it was a, a black kid behind that voice. Right. And I wasn't really tripping on it because I knew that I was a part of it anyway. Right. And nobody could take that away from me. Right. So but if we knew we were black, it's possible. But that just goes to show you, everything is supposed to happen when it's supposed to happen, when God wants it to happen. Right. Because when it was finally revealed who the voice, the singing was behind it, the singing voice behind it, I think it was more impactful at that time, mm-hmm. especially when the community was made more aware of it because this is a time, this is a black renaissance that we're in now. Right. And especially here in Atlanta, and you're seeing so many people emerge or come to the forefront that you didn't know right. were a part of these iconic projects. I mean, it just seemed like it was kind of like a snowball effect, yeah. you know, of all this information coming out that our people could learn and be aware yeah. of. Mm-hmm. So, I don't regret it. Like, you know, my whole journey in this industry, good, bad, or ugly, man, the, the journey has just been absolutely incredible. I feel like, you know, we still got a lot more left to do. Facts. But, man, what God has taken me thus far, man, it's just been nothing short of amazing, especially a kid coming from Chicago. Like, there's not too many of us that get opportunities yeah, like man. that. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, shit. Disney, keep you a chick, man. Okay. So, but, how, but how you get into... ATL, cause I've been wearing these skates this Hold whole up, goddamn we, we episode. Hold on, we gotta do, you gotta do the, you ain't do the American dream shit. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on, and then we'll go into ATL. All right, come back. Cause, yeah, I'm, yeah. cause I'm gonna say too. <laughs> That's why you wore the skates. <laughs> and I, and I hope they get it together like Warner Brothers. Man, y'all need to stop playing. Let's do an ATL too. Come, hey, come on, on, man. Hey, what, on. what we hey, doing? Come on, now what we doing? What we doing? Hey, Dallas. Stop playing. Man, we gotta figure this out, man. He was up with Jermaine Dupree last night in the game. Oh yeah, man, they yeah. get everywhere together. No, so man, yeah. we gotta do ATL too. But anyway, no cap. the 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 Jacksons miniseries, um, how that came about, real quick. 
my cousin Lainey Stewart, another successful um, music producer, multi-platinum music producer, was being managed by um, Suzanne DePass at that time. Right. And he was working with like Aaron Hall and Shantae Moore and Keith Washington, this real old school R&B. Hell yeah. They were all coming up to Chicago working in his studio. Mm -hmm. And so one of Suzanne's representatives came up to Chicago from LA and I was there at the studio because that's when I first started songwriting. That's when me and Tricky were like, first training him as a producer and me as a songwriter. Mm. And I was like 11 years old. And Ruth Carson, that's her name, she would come to the studio and every time she'd see me, she'd be like, yo, who's that little guy? Like, mm. he's always singing, he's always dancing, like, because I don't know if y'all know this, but we about to do this biopic about Michael Jackson and his family and he need to audition for that shit. Like, I'm gonna tell Suzanne that he need to audition for that shit. So I was like, man, whatever. I'm, out of all the kids that could play Michael Jackson, they gonna pick me? That's yeah. what I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, whatever, she just talking. Sure enough, like I get a call from my agent. I had a local agent at the time, Elizabeth Geddes in Chicago. Shout out to Elizabeth. She called me and said, yo, um, the casting director from the Jackson's in American Dream wants you to audition mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So come down here to the office. This is when you still had to actually go to someone's office, they put you on videotape, mm. they have to FedEx the tape out. Right. It was like a whole fucking yeah. process, right. you know what I'm saying? So I go to, to go audition, maybe about two weeks later, uh, ABC and uh, the producers called back and said they wanted to fly me out to LA for, um, for a producer's call back. Go out to LA, and here's, here's, here's some other real shit. The, the minute I was supposed to audition for the Jackson family, because even when you got to LA, there was a round of audition. There was like three rounds of audition <clears throat> that you had to go through before you got to audition for the actual Jackson family. Mm. So I had to go through that gauntlet of just like stuff to finally make it to audition in front of them. And so when I finally got there, there was an assistant casting director who I guess that day had just been having a shitty day and right. she was just over it. And so she was just passing sides out to the kids that were left. And so she wasn't taking into consideration the kids who had been told who they were specifically auditioning for. So she had handed me some sides for like Randy or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, Randy, and there's no offense to you. <laughs> but it was like, Randy J. Yeah, yeah. He was telling me, hey, I'm baby, be hey, hold on, baby. No, nah, it was two pages of dialogue, yeah. and I was like, I got three callbacks for Michael. Yeah, I was like, no. Nah. I'm here to do. I'm here to do Michael, and so I'm saying that in my mind, right. but I'm scared. You, you gotta say it out loud. Right. Yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> so I, I, I start rehearsing the Randy shit. Not real shit. He taking no, 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 no. It's how we. I start rehearsing the Randy shit. No. And there was a kid that came out. Of, I'm about to go in. There was a kid that came out, and I guess he had a horrible audition. No. And he threw his sides in the garbage can next to me. And I'm on the couch like this, name of the Mike sides. So I took him up by the garbage can, and I just started reviewing him real quick, trying to get reacquainted with the dialogue. And I just did like a quick jam crash course. And then they called my name. Mm. And I went in, and I said the lines, and that was cool. But then that's when they started asking me to sing. And I was so, like, me and my mother rehearsed those routines so much. Man, I could have did that shit in my sleep. And it was just like, and I'll never forget, I knew I kind of had the part, sort of, when I saw Mrs. Jackson smiling at me and she had looked over at the director and she was like, he's good. And so I was like, okay, cool. But I didn't get the part that day. They put me on the red eye, me and my mother back to Chicago. Shit. <laughs> and we was back in Illinois and I waited maybe about five months because Michael was on tour. And then Michael had finally seen the tape and he made the decision to hire me for the role. And that's how I got it. Shout out to Mike. Shout out to Mike. So Mike had to, Mike had to, Mike had Mike, to. He had to okay. yeah. No, he, he, he had to make the, the final decision. All three actors that played him, the young one, the middle one, which was me, and my man Wiley Draper, God rest Wiley Soul, who was, who was uh, Atlanta native, who was mm -hmm. from here in Atlanta. Ooh, um he picked us like we were the ones that Michael personally chose. And so, you know, we all we knew we had to do was when we got on set, we had to live up to his expectations because we were just on it like, man, if Michael sees something and it's like, we got to be on our shit. And, right. and we worked hard. I worked seven days a week on that shit willingly, voluntarily. It, let me make this clear. We technically only worked five days a week, but the cast 
we all would get together on Saturday and Sunday and rehearse. Get in together. Like every weekend, no Work matter what. Right. And I'm talking about five, six hours of straight dance rehearsal in front of a mirror in the conference room at the hotel we were staying at. And Bumper, Bumper Robinson was the one who orchestrated, shout out to Bumper, but he was like, yo man, we about to be portraying the Jackson family. Like, this is black royalty. We cannot fuck this up. <laughs> At all. Right. It's like, we cannot right. fuck this up. So everybody, yeah. like, be on your shit, vocalize every day, have your shit together. And when we were on point. By the time that came out, when we looked back on the work that we did, oh, it made sense. Yeah, Those yeah, rehearsals though. and everything, it made sense. That's, That's the one that classes, held up. Man, man thank you, classes. man. Man, I, I appreciate y'all. Like. Real shit, like I, you know, that that means a lot to me because I've, I've been in this business a long time, and I think you guys know from being in the in the industry for the amount of time that you all have been in, you all are vets as well. You can kind of get a little jaded, man, because you go through so much shit. You know what I'm saying, leading up to whatever that opportunity is that takes you into your next chapter of life and your career. And so when you get the opportunity to meet with your peers, to build with your peers, and they express to you how much they appreciate your work and that they see you. That means a lot to me, man, because yeah, bro. like Come real on, shit, when, go, when we would be working, go. I would be yeah. thinking about y'all. Pardon yeah. me, I'm just spit in your face, but <laughs> I, w- I would be thinking about y'all. I'd be thinking about who's the next generation, like right. coming up after us. What kind of example are we setting? Right. Like, what are we saying? Because I want, I want kids to come up after us knowing that they can do it. But like, man, we, we got a real responsibility. Right. So now to have this opportunity to meet y'all, and to build with y'all and to see y'all exceed and pass what we've done. Because honestly, look at this whole situation over here, man. This is taking whatever groundwork and foundation that we laid as young black performers, man, y'all taking this shit to the next level and having ownership in what it is that y'all doing. So like, man, but even, but even, but even for icing on the cake, is this, this, this platform, we, we cherish it because we get to sit here and have people that we're fans of. Like, just to see that you say that, it's like, but still, we had to watch y'all in order for us to know what the blueprint was like for us anyway. You see what I'm saying? And for us to been doing it for the amount of time that we've been doing it, and for us to even have people like you to come on and just hear how we make you feel, we be really be like, did you hear what the nigga said? Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, like, right, we be on the phone like, you hear what the nigga said? Yeah. But we had to keep our yeah. composure, but we love this job so much because we it, it allows us to to engage with the people that inspired us. And we get, and yeah. y'all get to kick it. Yeah. And be yeah. chilling. And we and be like, this no is a lot of real niggas. And I'm going to say this too, man. You one of them people that need to be celebrated more, man. I feel like a lot of times, just in our community, a lot of times everything we celebrate is the negative and the worst of the shit. They celebrate the fall off. They celebrate how a nigga fell off. They want to do how to, what what happened to the shit. But talk about the motherfuckers that's still here. Talk about the motherfuckers that, I feel like it's more the game from somebody who did good business and did continually succeed at their craft than looking at the tragedy and travesty shit. Nah, I appreciate right. that. So, no, I, no yeah, thank bro. you for saying thank that. Because there are a lot of us, man, who have been able to maintain careers without, like, you know, and what we discussed earlier, we all human beings. Yeah. Right? We've all had our shit. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? But we've been really, really blessed in a way where the mistakes that we've made um, that have helped us grow as men, right. we've been able to do that in private, like, without you know, having social media and, right, you know, right. TMZ and people like that on your yeah. back where you could make your mistakes as a human being and grow and evolve. So I was even blessed with that as well, where, you know, my mother created a certain type of balance in my life where when work was over in Los Angeles and we'd be back on a plane, I'd be right back in the neighborhood, right. like interacting with my friends, yeah. going to school, going to the grocery store, Having saying what's up life. to my neighbor, right. having a right. real life. Right. 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 And to where I could I could see what my neighbors were going through in their everyday lives or whatever struggles that they may have had. Mm-hmm. And then that would allow me to look back and go, man, I'm really blessed, man. Like, yeah, yeah. like man, I'm getting right. on a fucking plane yeah. tomorrow to go to a place that, man, I never thought I'd go to. Yeah. To yeah. do make believe. Yeah. Where they make fucking TV at? That shit will right. blow your mind, man. Right? And, it, and, it, and it blew my mind, man. It's, such a, it's, su- it's been such just a fucking blessing, man. I'm just grateful, man. Just grateful to God for everything. Grateful right. for the support from the community. Yeah. I can't stress that enough because, like what you said, we live in a time where, you know, people kind of find joy in your pain or the struggles right. that you go through. 
but I've just been really, really blessed where, with our community in particular, it's all been about celebrating and acknowledging the work that I've done and supporting me and like letting me know on the street or letting me know on social media, hey man, you keep doing your thing. Facts. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. black men yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, coming up that. to me, like especially with the shy, like with the show on and all of that, with the character that I'm portraying. Yeah. Like I know a lot of guys like that back home whose stories never get told like that. Right. So I'm, I'm having guys come up to me and be like, hey Joe, man, I appreciate you, man. Like, cause that's how that shit really is. You know what I'm saying? Right. And for you to, for you to tell the real story like that and present it in a real way, you're not glorifying it, you're not glamorizing it, like you're telling it what it is. To hear that shit from other black men, right. like yeah. that means a lot. Cause yeah. we don't talk. We don't. Yeah. We don't talk. We don't. Yeah. And no. even if a nigga like you, he be yeah. like, man, I ain't gonna go over there and say that. I ain't no fan, man, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. But just see, I don't want to yeah. be like no fan. Yeah, I don't want to be no fan, <laughs> nigga. Oh, man, you fan of that hell. Let me get this picture for hey, my girl. Like, hey. bro. You a fan, hey. bro. You a fan. Hey. Hey man, I don't even be doing this whole ass shit. Yeah, come on, come on, man. Picture, it's okay. Like, it's like, it's, it's okay. See, all you real niggas out there, they ain't even see me in public. Man, say what's up, man. Yeah. Yeah. But not only that, it's history. I don't history. even like niggas. Right. <laughs> but, even, but even not only that, it's history. Just like you said, Miss, what's her name, Susanna? Oh, uh, Susanna Pass. Su Susanna, for her to even put the things in place, and, and we don't know that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, so when you hear her name, you're like, okay, she's important. Yeah. She's part of the history. Yeah. Like, it's so many iconic and icons out there and pioneers who we don't know about. Oh, but, and let me tell you, they know y'all, though, because the one thing about those pioneers and people like Susan the Pass who are trailblazers, they always keep their ear to the street. Mm -hmm. They always checking to see what the youth is talking about, what's relevant in the culture. It may seem like they distant right. and that they over in just Hollywood, but nah, they right watching there. because they're the ones that find that talent and go, man, they need to be on a bigger platform. Right. Know what I'm saying? So, no, nah, just, and I want y'all to know that, y'all know this already, but man, please know that the work that y'all doing and the platform that y'all providing for guys like myself, for the OGs like Snoop, right. man, we appreciate this, man, because we don't get a lot of opportunities to speak to our community directly like that and give them the real. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And for black men to celebrate one another the way that y'all do us, like, Man, the world needs to see that. So that's why y'all winning, because y'all some real niggas with that shit. What? Yeah. You heard him? Yeah. Nigga? Yeah. So I just can't wait. It sound different coming from Silver. It sound different, bro. Nah, you're talking. <laughs> no, you're talking. Hold up, we got to get to ATL. Please, cause my gotta skates. Gotta get the ATL. Okay. He got his skates on. Oh, man. Yeah, and then I don't know. I've been doing this shit all day. Man, man. I'll let hey, welcome back to the ATL. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get some with you. I'm gonna sit with you, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Chilling with big family, man. None other than Jason Weaver. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Thank y'all. Nigga from Chicago, but didn't get none of my JJ. Know how that shit be. That's why he asked. Look, I didn't know you were going to JJ's. I said y'all have the sharks out here, too. We do. Yeah, that, all of them yeah. all that the same thing. JJ, Harold, yeah. Fish. In a minute in Atlanta, you're gonna be able to get at least two restaurants from wherever you're from. Yeah. We got we got Harold's. Yeah, yeah. Got we two, got a few Harold's. Yeah. 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 That'll yeah. give you enough sauce. Okay. Y'all one and Marietta do it. They yeah, the one in Marietta. Yeah, yeah. 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 they give you sauce. Like, the, the one on Auburn Avenue, they was goddamn rationing out the sauce. Like, look, we get sauce once a month. How much sauce do you want? Don't talk about my folks on Edge. They try to do their thing. Shout out to Harold Edge. At the ice bar. We got an ice bar. We're in limited amount of sauce. <laughs> no more sauce. JJ, give it to you. In Chicago, they put sauce on your bag. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> on the house side. Sauce go with everything. <laughs> Nigga, the bag be thin in the motherfucker. You don't even have to open that shit. You can just push it out of the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you y'all talking about ATL though? Cause I do. I, Cause I'm gonna let y'all go. Where are you you gonna let us go? <laughs> look, look, I ain't gonna hold. Yeah, I ain't gonna hold. But I, I gotta get this out because this is important yeah. Atlanta history. Yeah, we in Atlanta, right now. Some, somewhere. Listen, we shout out to Dallas Austin. Let me tell y'all something about Dallas Austin. For those of y'all who may not know, Dallas Austin is a mega super producer Facts. who has been producing some of the biggest records in the music industry. Since the late 80s, going into the 90s, he discovered Monica, another bad creation. Here. Boys to Men, he's responsible for that. It was a whole movement. Listen, LaFace Records, all that, the foundation of Atlanta, mm -hmm. he's one of the founding fathers. He's there with Jermaine, mm -hmm. he's there with Organized Noise, mm -hmm. he's there with Oop Camp. Talk your shit. Uh, LA Babyface, 
uh, who else? I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on, but he's one of the founding fathers. Yeah. The reason why y'all have movies like Drumline and ATL mm -hmm. is because of Dallas Austin. Yes, sir. Big yes, yes, sir. We had him on here. Oh, 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 okay, cool. Oh, he had the craziest. Yeah, he was, oh, he kicked cool. spent the night in Madonna's yeah. castle. And a ghost was in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no Dallas, Dallas got some fucking yeah. crazy story. Man, oh, he, he told him. He, 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 he he both y'all. Both y'all. Y'all y'all running close with the... Man, with his, no, Dallas, Dallas and shit is even crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you grew up, up in the up whole with. industry. You didn't probably seen the weirdest shit. That's true, but Dallas founded a city. He did. <laughs> he founded an entertainment capital. Like, we all came down here, cash from up north and, like, from the west coast of L.A., we all came down here because we was trying to fuck with Dallas and Jermaine and organized nut. That's why I came down here. I was trying to fuck with them and like learn what this was. And I knew that there was a component to this town where it could be a film and TV town. But those were the guys I had never seen that before. Mm -hmm. I had never seen niggas pulling up like young niggas pulling up in Ferraris and shit. And you go into their houses and they sitting on acres and where they fucking houses all the way back there. Like I'm, I had never seen that before. Mm -hmm. And so Atlanta opened my eyes to that, and Dallas was like one of the first people to do that and like to welcome me and my family to this city. So when ATL came up, Dallas and I had already done Drumline together. Right. We already did Drumline. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. had had some success on the film side. But ATL was originally titled Jelly Bean. Mm. Yep, yep. It, it was, was the the old skating skating skating. Skating. Mm -hmm. And it was gonna be based on the story of Dallas, like discovering TLC and all of that, because Jelly Bean was like where all of those groups went, to the Outcasts right. and all that. That's where they went and hung out when they were kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we were trying to retell that story. It evolved over time, and especially with the studio's involvement, the script adjusted. But Dallas had hit me one day, and he was like, "Hey, man, you know I'm doing another movie down here. Like, you fucking with me? Because." You ain't auditioned for it. I was like, well, I didn't even know right. what was going on. So, <laughs> and that's when I got rid of my agent that I was with, because this nigga right. fucked that up. Right. He right. dropped the ball. Right. So I called him. I was like, hey, man, they shooting a, another movie down here in Atlanta, a big budget film called um, Jelly Bean, man, and like Tip's supposed to be in it. And all these different people. I was like, how are they going to shoot a movie down here like that? And I'm not in it. And so they found a way for me to audition. Right. And I came in at the tail end. They hadn't um, cast Teddy yet. They hadn't cast Esquire or Teddy yet. Mm -hmm. So I auditioned for Esquire. Wasn't really convincing with that one. Um, but Teddy, uh, it was like, I mean, cause I, I know, oh, right. I know yeah, that nigga right. down yeah. here. Like yeah. I used to kick it with guys like that at 559 and 112 and yeah. shit. Like, you know what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I know people over yeah. here. Yeah. 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 You worked at Eddie's Gold on the show. Like, I you, got family yeah. from back here. Fucking yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I know what it is. <laughs> so when I auditioned for that role, everything just rolled into place. <laughs> right. And it just made sense. And man, we had a ball. How long was y'all shooting a bit? Uh, two months, but every day was a video shoot. That shit was lit. Man, it what? was lit. I mean, we had so much fun, man. To this day, like, I may not speak to Tip every day. I may not see Lauren every day. I may not see Jackie, but man, let us run into each other in the street somewhere, just some random shit. Right. Man, we together for the rest of the night. Like, we all became a real family on that show. Yeah. And we just enjoyed, we genuinely enjoyed each other's company. Tip was gracious because, you know, I have been living in Atlanta for a long time, but there was still some things I didn't know about it. And then the rest of them, they were all out from California and shit. Right. So this nigga would, after we get through rehearsing at Skate Town, he'd get everybody in the car, and we would like go through the swats, we'd go through Bankhead, he would like, should we go down Simpson Road? Then we'd go to like Buckhead. He would take us around the city so we could get a feel mm -hmm. for what the, like what's going on with the people and the culture and the energy. Mm -hmm. And just him being so gracious, big boy, like big boy would always set up where he'd had a masseuse come if we had like a hard day on set mm -hmm. and we'd been skating all day, he would have like his private masseuse come and like, Give everybody back rubs and you can get your nails done and that's shit. Cold. That's, that's cold. Cold. That's love. It was yes, some player that's shit. Yes, it was some player <laughs> shit. We had a ball. Shout out to Chris Robinson. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Will Smith, who was one of our executive producers. Shout yeah. out to T Boss. Will Smith was one of the executive producers. Yeah. He was one of the EPs and yeah. T Boss. Overbrook one of the did it, right? Overbrook, Overbrook did. Yeah. Yep. Overbrook. James Lasseter. 
Those Captain guys. Bimo, Charlie Mack was down here. Charlie, Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack been everything. Charlie Mack Charlie. would be skating with us at rehearsal. His big ass would be fucking tripping all up and down. <laughs> Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack. That's right. That's but T-Bow's got to come on this bitch, too. That's she got to. She got a story to tell. Chili got to come, too. They, 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 you, I feel like you still, this, the Jelly Bean movie still need to be made. Fat. Fat, because that's when you said, when you movie. said, that's, that, that's was different movies. ATL, but... that was my generation. Now you gotta yeah. understand, when y'all made it, look, look, I'm, 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 I gotta take it back. Mm-hmm. When they said Cascade, I grew up on Cascade, I grew up in the Cascade skating ring. That's my shit. Gotcha. I was the first young skating crew Cascade ever had. We don't want competitions. I don't care what nobody said. That's my <laughs> shit. Okay. You understand me? Okay. The first young skate. Nigga, I remember crew. when the first opened up, nigga, dust used to be coming down in our eyes. We couldn't <laughs> skate, my nigga. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> we complained and we got shit straight in that bitch. Yeah. So when y'all came down, they were like, it's yeah, they about to shoot a movie in this bitch. Cause we thought it was just our shit. Yeah. This is our hangout. Yeah. And we were like, they not about to make a movie about skaters. They like, nigga, they finna shut this bitch down for about two and a half months, and we ain't got nowhere to go. So we was mad about not having nowhere to go, but we was like, we can't wait to see the movie because we want to see what type of shit they don't portray about ATL. Yeah. Nigga, y'all had skate crews who I used to skate with in the movie. Mm-hmm. All them niggas, Mario, the nigga who tipped. Took Lauren from in the, in the in the house party. Yeah, I know that. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. He was in there talking, acting like he mad. I'm like, nigga, you ain't mad, nigga. You mad? <laughs> yeah. But it was like when that shit came out, bro. Atlanta was so we was excited and we appreciate the movie so because that's our shit. Yeah, that's like the whole world get to know about ATL yeah. through that goddamn movie. And, and yeah. a lot of people in the movie theater resonated with you more so mm. because you was Eddie. Yeah. You the nigga who did Eddie Goes. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie Goes was a nigga that right. was popping at the time. Yeah. Right. And everybody knew, what's up, Eddie? I don't know where right. you at. Yeah. But don't go to Eddie, you gonna make your goals too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm right. saying? Right. You gonna walk out with the y'all. You gonna nigga, man. That's what we said. <laughs> you wanna know what we said on the rest of this video? Go to that. <laughs> Just in case you wonder what we're doing, we are now showing you just how important having the 85 South Show app is because you was watching this show thinking, oh, they done finally put the shit back on YouTube. No. They was listening. We weren't. We weren't. It's on the app. It's on the app. The rest of this, listen, the rest of the audio is on the app. <laughs> 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 Now, you gotta know what we Woo. said, you gotta go get the app. That's the 85 South Show app. It's available on Amazon, Five Stick, Apple TV, wherever you get your subscription. No, it's not. It's, it's just, not on Apple it's just TV? available directly where they sell apps. Or oh, they don't sell apps on Apple TV? It's where well, y'all should fuck with us too, Apple TV. Roku. Here wrong with y'all. It fuck is Roku. on there. Put it on Roku. Don't say fuck nobody. No, I didn't say fuck them. I said put it, I thought we fuck with them. Oh, we do. My house full of Rokus. Oh. The Roku the most air world. Yeah. So subscribe to the app. It's only $8.99 a month or $85 a year. So you get a whole year for $85. Did yeah. you know that? It's $8.50 and then you gotta pay tax. Yeah, okay. so you know, it's eight. You know, we get them all type of content. You know what, we not even gonna tell them who you got your glasses from until they get it on the app. I mean, hey, you gotta watch the app. The app is available. All of these people that say we should keep putting this on YouTube for free, what about the years of freeness that we've already provided upon you? We gave this away for free for together. years. Let's move together. Why would you let somebody come year. invest in the show and put it on another network and you're buying their subscription? You don't ask them why you're buying their shit. So don't ask us. We're putting it on the app. Who's over the app? Nobody knows. Get the app. Yeah. We saw what you said in the comments. We, sure did. we saw it. We saw everybody. The good, the we bad. Somebody read every fucking comment. And the ugly. We'll so you know what? We folding under this pressure. Sure we hear you. We heard you. We hear you. We went and did. We'll that's just get the fuck on at y'all way. Yep. Just for an hour though. Yep. That's yep. all you get is an hour. So don't you can't complain. Well, where the rest of it? I at? think they should get 37 minutes. Oh, see, we got to hurry up. We should up. just put a whole bunch of ads in between, like long ads, ads, like five minute ads. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Uh, you 
<laughs> Slow motion. Slow, ass. slow, slow it down. Waste a motherfucking time. Yeah, uh, let's just uh go ahead and make sure. Channel85.com. I wanna make sure I read what they wrote. They wrote some shit out for us. These niggas don't know how to spell or type proper sentences, but they trying get to get right us now. to get y'all to buy the app. What you think we wanna read this shit? Channel 85, man. So we can talk that shit, man. Ladies, don't you like the deep thrust? Go get it on the app. Shit, man. That's right, on the app, uncensored, unfiltered, and edited. Can you believe that? I'm talking about with actual production in it. Thanks. Jump cuts, yep. clips, all types of type of like exclusive shit that they don't even know that we did. They don't even know that we got a show where we be cooking like exotic foods and shit. Okay. That's on the app. Got sports shows. Yep. Talk show, documentary. Chico got a handwriting class that he Real teach. <laughs> Nobody passed it, because that's why the shit looked like right. this. But we're working on it, and you can see it on the app. They didn't, the e- app. They didn't even tell them about the tax course that we had uploaded on there. No they don't even know that we, we got we a whole show about Wall Street. And a $5,000 on the app. Right. <laughs> and we got the alternate ending to the color purple up there. Oh, right. man. No we got the raw edition, all the uncut, all the bloopers. We got all that. Right. It's on the app. So if you want to see... Some shit that you know they trying to hide from. Go to that. I'm leaving though. Channel85.com. Go get the app. You got an hour for free. We gave you what you wanted. Now give us some subscriptions to the app. 850, 899 with tax, $85 a year. Channel85.com, 85 South Show. Get the app. Well, see, this is what they don't know. The app really $3, but adjusted for inflation is $8. Yeah. yeah. What low said? Get the app, man. Stop bullshitting. We out of here, man. We're not about to keep working all this time for. Been working for free. We are going on app, baby. We are going on app. We on your way to fly. Oh, yeah.